Hello, I'm Susan Woodcock, owner of HomeDeckGal.com. And I'm here Kim. today. Oh, hi, Kim. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm here today with Kim Shagnon. Kim, do you want to say hello? <laughs> hi, I'm Kim Shagnon from Kim's Upholstery. And we're here today to do a presentation for the Window Treatment and Upholstery Workrooms community on Google+. Thank you for joining us today. Our topic is welt cord. And um, we are going to just share a few of our favorite tips. Um, I think most of the folks joining us today are professionals and probably know the basics. Um, we'll cover a little bit about the basics and then um, show some tips for maybe doing something a little different that you haven't tried before. So I'm going to get started with my slide program. If you have questions, there is um, an opportunity for you to type in questions to us. And Kim will monitor the questions while I'm speaking. And um, I'll do the same for her. And uh, so just let us know if you have any questions along the way. We'd love to hear back from you. Um, it often makes our presentation much better when we get questions. So I'm going to screen share so I can start my slide program. And it's going to show my desktop, which isn't exactly what I wanted it to do. So hold on a second. <laughs> I'm going to pull up the, the uh, presentation. <laughs> When I practiced, it gave me the option to um, uh, to show the PowerPoint. So I don't know what's going on, but we'll try again. There we go. Okay. <laughs> and let's go to full view. Kim, does that look okay from your end? I was answering you, but I was muted. It looks okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> great. Great. Thank you. Um, before we get started on the presentation, I um, hope you've heard that Kim and I are hosting the Sewing and Upholstery Retreat, October fifth through seventh, at Lutheridge Camp and Conference Center in Arden, North Carolina. We have a Facebook page for Sewing and Upholstery Retreat, and hope that you visit the page. You can see pictures of the venue. And we're going to be making more announcements very soon about the teachers, the cost, the schedule, and all of that. We're busy running our businesses and on the side planning this event. So um, we do hope you can join us in North Carolina later this year. It's going to be tons of fun. So my topic today, um, welt cord. If you do want to get in touch with me, um, you can reach me at Susan at HomeDeckGal.com. And of course, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. So here's an outline of what I'm going to cover. Um, tools and supplies, covering welt cord, encased welt cord, flanged welt cord, which might be something new for you. And um, Liz had written in and asked to learn how to put micro welt cord applied to a drapery panel. So I'm going to show that as well. Tools and supplies, one of the most important parts um, are the feet for your sewing machine. You will need an assortment of feet in different sizes, and um, uh, from fat cord down to skinny cord. And I have a couple um, feet that are cut out on the back. I don't use those a whole lot, but sometimes it helps when you're turning corners uh, to have that. Um, that was sort of a little specialty foot, but the three on the left would be the three that I use most often those types of cording feet. And then I have them in really small sizes. Yes, Kim? You're still on your main screen. Oh, because I'm I've moved forward, but must be a time lapse. Do you see a picture of cording feet? Nope, I still see the main screen that you started with. All right, so I'm going to Oh, there you go. Now I see okay. cording feet. All right. <laughs> it seems like when I go in full screen it's not um Let's try that again. Are we there now? You're on the cording feet. Okay, great. Let me know if it doesn't progress because I, can, um, I can't see what you see. Thank you. So anyway, you can use a zipper foot to apply welt cord. Um, probably not my favorite thing to do. The, having the groove in the bottom of the foot really makes a difference. Okay. Did the slide progress? Uh, it did not progress, but you also have a list of questions here. Okay. I'm having to bounce back and forth, so it takes me a there's a little bit of a delay <laughs> from getting back here. So let me give you the questions. Let's see. 
Do you ever use bead chain weight as weld cord? And if so, do you have a preferred size? Um, I do, and I'm going to talk more about that when I talk about micro weld okay. later in the um, slides. Okay, most of them are those types of questions, so I'll wait till you get there. Okay, and I'm just going to leave my slide presentation um, like this and see if it progresses better. I don't know. You'll have to look at the little previews of the slides on the left. It seems like when I go to full screen, it's not. Yeah, it looks forward. fine that way. Okay, all right, great. Um, so covering welt cord, I prefer to cut and sew bias strips. Once in a while, I'll use cut on the straight, especially if I'm um, doing a cushion or a pillow where I'm trying to match the stripes, and you want the stripes on the straight. Um, the benefit of cutting on the bias is you can go around curves <clears throat> excuse me, and edges much easier than with cord cut on the straight. It sort of has that nice stretch to it. And I always allow a yard and a half of fabric, at least. Um, why? Because on the bias, a yard and a half is about 72 inches more or less. When you fold over the, um, the selvage over to the other selvage to get that bias edge, you're going to get about 72 inches with an average 54 inch wide fabric. So for me, that's easy math. Each strip is two yards, so I know that two, 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 two. I can add it up really fast in my head when I'm cutting. And also when I'm figuring yardage, um, let's say I needed four cuts uh, at two inches each. That's two, four, six, eight um, inches. I'm going to have to add two, um, get that extra um, fabric. So I always start off with a yard and a half and then add a little bit more based on how many strips you're going to cut. Yes, you're going to have a waist piece, a nice triangle. You can also cut that up into welt cord um, or use it to, you know, make a pillow. And to speed up cutting on the bias, instead of cutting that long 72 inches, fold your bias over into a smaller package. Um, you can do this on thinner fabrics. If you're using an upholstery weight fabric, you might not be able to do it. And the fabric kind of slips, so um, I don't worry about cutting perfect cording, especially if you're going to serge it off. It's actually better to have it too big than trying to cut it exactly. And on this cord, I am going to serge it off. So it's just a matter of folding over that bias edge to a smaller size package. And then you could use a rotary cutter here, too, as well as using scissors. So you're, you're making like, you know, six chomps of the scissors instead of going across all the way across that two yards on the bias. And sewing together your bias strips, um, you place them face to face and overlap, the app, overlap them about a half inch. And when you do that, you get a V at the top and bottom. That is your little arrow pointing you to where you're going to sew. So you stitch down from one V to the other V, and um, you can use a matching thread because sometimes the cord, when it's stretching and pulling and going around corners, might have a little stress on the stitches, and you want the stitches to match. And fold it over. Use your cording foot. Don't use too small of a cording foot at this point. You just want to cover the cord. You don't want to get really tight to it. And then just finger press all of those open at the sewing machine. Um, before you before you sew them. You don't need to go and iron them on the ironing, you know, with an iron. That's waste time. So that's basics about covering welt cord. So now what we're going to do is do some projects using welt cord. The first one is encased welt cord. And here's some examples of projects that you can do with encased welt cord. And when I say encased, I mean that the seam is on the inside. You don't have a flanged or an edge or a lip that you're going to sew on. And you'll use encased cord when you're creating knots, um, like this drapery panel at the left. Uh, these pillows here with they have little bows um, in the corners. The pillow on the right, the bolster, has frogs. You can use encased welt cord to make frogs and Chinese knots. Susan? Yes. 
Let me ask you some of the questions. I think you're okay. probably getting a little bit ahead of some of these. Um, okay, great. How do you keep the fabric from twisting when you're making the cord? When you're using welt cord, you want to make sure it's hung horizontal and you're pulling it off the roll and you're not setting the roll of welt cord on the floor and twisting it up off um, of the floor. That's one way. Um, and also when you're feeding it through the foot, you don't want to pull it too tight. Um, you want to sort of let it feed in as you go. And it does take practice. Sometimes if you're having trouble with welt cord, um, it takes a little bit of practice. I find that the soft welt cords, I don't have as much trouble um, as I would with some of the heavier ones because I'm, I'm more accustomed to sewing with the soft welt cords. So I hope that helps. And the next one is best feet to use with different size weld cords, which you did talk about the feet a little. Yeah, and I'll talk more about that as I go along. Okay. So thank uh, you. Can you explain the different sizes in the weld, the numbers and what they mean? Like five no. thirty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> you know, it'll be like a ten, a twelve, a fourteen. I don't know. I don't. I don't put. I don't connect the dots there. Um, well, I can. I can hit on that a little okay, bit. Okay, good. If you want me to intervene here? Um, yes. It's like the five thirty seconds. Think of it as a half an inch and convert it. So if you took, like, let's say, like four thirty seconds would be an eighth of an inch. So five thirty seconds is like a sixteenth bigger than an eighth of an inch. Okay, that that I understand. Okay. I guess I thought the question was, and some um, vendors have welt cords by numbers. Okay, so there. it's a size 2 or a size 10 or a size 14. I have no idea what those are. Okay. She was asking more about the 530. <laughs> got seconds, it. So we got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't like fractions. I don't do fractions well. So I'm the math girl. Good. Good. We make a good team. <laughs> uh, do you have a preference for the size of cording that you like to use along the bottom edge of a valance? I'd like to use a smaller size. It would either be a micro welt or a 432nd or 532nd soft welt cord. Um, very seldom have I used a large welt cord on the bottom of a balance. Okay, now, cornice board, uh, board is a different story. You can okay, use anything. That's another question. Mm -hmm. Is the cornice board and lambrequins what size you would use? I could, you know, you can go a little bit larger, but I pretty much, I use a lot of just narrow welt cord. I don't use a lot of, of big, thick welt cord. Um, of course, I've been in this business long enough since the 80s to, to have used a lot of big, fat welt cord, but it's really, the styles now are really small. Um, I probably wouldn't use over half inch um, welt cord anymore on anything, uh, honestly. And um, same on corner sports. It's, it's pretty much the same size I would use on pillows. Okay. Do you prefer the cotton or the polyester weld cord? I find there's not much difference in the way they work, um, but the polyester weld cord is whiter. So if you're using a white color fabric, um, the polyester um, doesn't have the discoloration. Um, and also the polyester cord is washable. So I would use that if I'm doing anything that's going to be washed. Um, and do you want to touch on that one where would you use a bead chain, and if so, what size would you prefer? Um, I'd probably use the smallest size bead chain, which I think off the top of my head is 432nd. Um, and yeah, that makes beautiful micro welt cord, uh, absolutely. And um, great for the bottom of balances, especially things that are um, cut on the bias and you don't want them to flare and you want them to fall uh, like swags and um, jabos. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, great. I love having the slides up so I don't have to worry about how I look. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Might just leave them up. <laughs> so here's some examples of encased weld cord. Knots on pleats, um, corners of pillows, the one on the bottom left. Um, if you've ever made a pillow with uh, welt cord at the corners that's knotted, um, that's encased cord that's knotted and then tucked into the seam at the corners. And you can put them anywhere. You could have knots, you know, throughout the welt cord on the corners um, in between. And then um, here's another um, pleat that has some encased cord at the bottom of the pleat. And then you can make ties. They could be chair ties, um, ties to tie valance like this onto medallions. So there's all kinds of uses for the encased welt cord.
So to make and case roll cord, um, which has the seam turned on the inside, you're going to roll off the amount of cord that you want to cover. Don't cut it off the roll. Roll off. If you're making four yards, roll off four yards, and that's where you're going to start sewing. So you wrap the bias strips over with the wrong sides out, so right sides together, different than you usually do, um, and stitch the cord to the fabric. So that's the slide up here at the top left. I'm just stitching over it. You want that to be stitched down nice and tight. And then turn around and start sewing down your weld cord. Note that I have huge pieces of bias here. I just whacked them out because you have to trim to a seam allowance. You have to trim down to a quarter inch seam allowance. It's too hard to sew with just a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm not going to try to cut a perfect half inch seam allowance if I'm just going to whack it off. So just cut out your cord. Don't worry about it being perfect if you're going to trim it off afterwards. So you're going to sew all the way down. And then um, I'm using a narrow um, a zipper foot. And you can see the cord is here. And I'm over a good quarter inch from that uh, because the seam has to turn inside the cord. Um, you don't want to sew too close to the cord, and you really don't want to catch the cord. A narrow foot works great, as um, some people call them a skinny foot, which I usually use when I'm making case swap cord, but I can't find my skinny foot. <laughs> I'm very, very sad. I'm going to have to buy another one because it's one of my favorite feet to use. So um, I am using the zipper foot here. And at the bottom slide, you can see the stitches and where I've sewed across that cord. Now I'm trimming off to the quarter inch seam allowance. And it's all trimmed. And there's the cord sticking out. So that yardage of cording that I pulled off, I'm now going to cover by pulling right against that seam and pulling it right sides out. It's a great idea to wear some kind of gloves, um, even rubber gloves like you use for washing dishes. It gives you a great grip if you're turning a whole lot of cord and you're just turning it onto itself and making a little snake. So there's the finished um, encased walk cord and this was um, 4 32nd size but you can do larger sizes. I don't think I'd do an encased bead chain that would be, well it might work. Uh, I'll have to do an experiment and I'll get back to you. <laughs> so <laughs> I've never done that. Um, and for this uh, valance, I'm just sewing it inside the pleat and then tacking the pleat. And then um, I just tied a bow here, but it was being tied onto um, medallions or finials. Susan? Yes. Someone asked what you mean by soft welt cord and what are you comparing it to? Um, a soft welt is. Um, cotton or polyester as opposed to a polypropylene or cellulose fiber welt cord. Um, so uh, I think Kim you're going to talk more about the types of welt cord used in upholstery. So yeah. um, sometimes in slip covers and upholstery you would use a, a heavier cord than a soft cord. Um, in draperies and valances most often you're using a soft which is either polyester or cotton. Great questions. Thank you. Are there any more before I go to the next project? Uh, let me just check here. Is the encased welt cord hard to fabricate? But I think you pretty much answered that. It can be if the fabric is difficult. Um, if you're using a fabric that frays really easily, you will want to put an iron-on um, lightweight interfacing or stabilizer because it takes a lot of tension when you're turning it onto itself and um, something that frays easily like a lightweight linen or a Dupioni silk it would tear the seam, seam open um, as you're turning it so that's the most difficult part is if you have an unruly fabric. And Somebody wants to know what are those gloves that you are wearing? <laughs> those are my jazz hands. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, those are crafting gloves like quilters gloves. I actually bought them at Walmart they're ten bucks. Um, I ordered them online, Walmart online, $10, and went in the store and picked them up. I also have um, the gloves, and when the video is back on, I actually can show them to you. I have them right here. Um, and I forgot the name. So Grip, I think, they have the little rubbery fingers on them. Those work great for um, 
doing the encased cord. So remind me and I'll, I'll, I'll put a glove on and, and model it for you in a minute. And those are available from uh, the, I know Rolly Company has them and some of the other drapery suppliers have the Sew Grip gloves. And just email me or, or send me a note on Facebook and I'll give you the information. Okay, so now we're going to go to a new idea. Actually, it might be new for you. It's not new for me. It's um, a technique that I did, gosh, probably 10 years ago for a, uh, a class I taught in Greenville, South Carolina with Cheryl Strickland when she was uh, living and hosting uh, seminars and retreats. And um, so I've had this around, and I have a pillow in my home that I love that has the flanged welt cord, and I don't know why, but I've never shared it since. So I'm bringing it back. I'm reviving it. Um, so this is a welt cord that's made with an extra lip or a flange of fabric to the outside of your welt cord. When you're putting it on pillows, you have to gather it around the corners. Um, if you're just going straight, if you were going down a leading edge of a drapery, you could just leave it as a flat flange. Yes, so Kim? Somebody is saying you're not in full screen. I think what you need to do is on the, where you see the slideshow, there should be a place on the bottom yes. right hand corner if you hover over where you can make it full screen. Absolutely. Yourself. And and I had it full screen, but the slides were not advancing. Well, no, I think, I, I think that they're they need to make their screen full screen, I think. Oh, um, because I had I had it in full screen and it, and it wasn't advancing, so I don't know. I don't know what... Um, but if it's your screen that's not in full screen, whoever posted this question, if you hover over the right-hand corner of where you see the slideshow, if you click, I think it's an arrow that appears, it should make it full screen mm -hmm. on your particular laptop or computer. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry if it's not, you know, uh, I, I don't know why it won't advance and when I have it on full screen. That's annoying because um, you get to see a preview of what's coming up. I might be able to move this over, though. Watch this. There you go. Now you can't, you can't see that, can you? <laughs> it's little. <laughs> um, so this is a ruffled flange um, welt cord. And uh, to make that, you're going to cut wider strips. And how wide depends on the size of your weld cord and the size you want the flange to be. And I usually keep it small. And instead of drawing a line, um, I folded it over and ironed in a crease. You could also put blue painter's tape on your sewing machine and let that be a guide um, to what size. After you stitch that seam, then you're going to insert your weld cord. And I know somebody's going to ask me, but Aren't you going to see the stitches? Um, yes. <laughs> if you go back, you can see you can see the stitches. Now, on this pillow, I matched the, the thread, um, so you can't really see it. On the blue pillow, which is the project I'm showing in the slides, um, I used a lighter color thread so you can see. Yes, you see the stitches. Um, and then make your cord. So I've stitched in the flange. Now I'm inserting the cord and then stitching the cord in place. And I went ahead and searched this off. Um, it's better to have it too large than um, too small because there is some take up, um, especially for a larger cord, as you wrap that cord around. And then sew it onto your pillow as you normally would. When you get to the corner, you're going to go to the end of your welt cord where there's welt cord sticking out and gather up probably about six or seven inches to go around the corners. Um, I, I tried just as an experiment to see how it would look if um, you didn't, and it just cups over. The, the flange, even though it's cut on the bias, um, it still needs some gathers in the corner, but it's still a pretty look. Um, why would you do this instead of inserting a welt cord and putting in a ruffle? Um, this pillow is now reversible. It has cording on the, the front and back look exactly the same. Um, so that's one reason why, and it's just something different. It's, it's not... Um, going to change the world, but it's something new and different. So this is the pillow that I have in my house that I've had for a long, long time. And I love the um, ruffled um, welt cord. And this, this time I didn't have any flat areas. And it's all cut on the bias with that really pretty check. So um, I just like that sort of movement and drama that that, that gives. And that does have micro cord on the face. 
And then here's if you don't want to have any ruffles. If you want a more tailored look, you can make the um, flanged cord and insert it into the seam, but you'll have to finish off your corners. You'll sew a seam, uh, cut the flange exactly the size you want it to be with a seam allowance on each end, sew it, turn it right size out, um, and then do your stitch line, tuck your welt cord in there, sew again, and then insert that into your pillow. Are there any questions on this before I move on? No, nope, no questions. Okay, great. So I hope you like that. I think it's a different detail. And now for Liz <laughs> and anybody else that wants to learn how to do this. Um, micro welt cord applied to the leading edge of a drapery. Um, the first thing is to finish the bottom hem and then I'm cutting off a facing that will sew back on the leading edge. So um, on the opposite side, and if you're making pairs, you'll cut, you know, so that you have pairs here. <laughs> um, and I'm cutting it three and a half inches past the um, selvage edge here. Uh, so my side hem will be a regular one and a half inch hem when it's finished. Don't trim off the selvage um, because you'll want to match the pattern later and you might need that selvage there. And then go ahead and cover your micro welt cord the same way, cut bias strips and cover the cord. Use a smaller size foot, but not too small because you don't want to get too snug until your last pass with sewing. On my sewing machine, I can put the micro welt right up there on where you put uh, cones of thread. So that's where it, it sits um, while I'm working with it. We're getting, again, asking about what size welt cords you use for different jobs. Okay, this is a 1 16th. This is very tiny. And this is cable cord that I'm using. It's Snow White cable cord um, from Conso. Um, Rolly Company has um, a braided micro welt cord, which is excellent. As you can see, this is more of a twist cord. Um, the one from Rolly Company is a braided cord. Um, you also can use... Um, shade cord if you want a stiff welt cord, stiffer micro welt, and as we mentioned earlier, you can use bead chain weight uh, to make micro welt. I would not use bead chain weight on the leading edge of a drapery. That's not necessary. Um, and shade cord for me is a little too stiff. Uh, I like the softer cord. So this is 1 16th inch cable cord. At the bottom hem, I'm going to start on this side of the drapery. I'm starting at the hem. When I sew it on the other side, I'll start at the top. But I finish off by cutting off about a half inch of the welt cord and then folding the fabric back over to create a neat ending spot. So it's not wrapping under the hem, it's ending even the bottom hem. And then continue sewing the micro welt um, down the leading edge. And then I'm going to sew that strip on that I cut off the opposite side. So I want to match up the pattern and I'm turned under that selvage. So you can see why I didn't cut the selvage off there. Um, I needed that extra fabric. Lay that along the micro welt, glue based into that seam allowance and all this is going to be trimmed off. Um, so it's um, not that important that you have um, a really narrow seam allowance at this point. And the glue is going into the, the lip of the welt cord, and that's all going to be trimmed away. But it helps to hold the pattern match in place when you go to the sewing machine. Um, and then set it with an iron um, over the glue. And you want to use a fabric glue, which um, dries you know, clear, and, and it's all fine. And you can see the micro welt and the facing, and the pattern is matched up. For a lot of my projects, I would use a contrast fabric here. So um, I could have used a blue fabric or a green fabric or a multicolor little check fabric, especially if you want the leading edge to be special. You know, maybe it's um, viewed from outside on the patio and you want to have a pretty fabric there. Um, so I can post some photos um, on Pinterest if you'd like to see what um, a contrast leading edge looks like. But I also think it's really pretty to match and have a matching um, leading edge. Okay, Susan, I have a question. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between welt and piping? <laughs> I think it's regional, honestly. Um, and I think piping is used more 
and garment sewing, garment, yeah. mm -hmm, the term. Um, and they would use a lot of the little cable cords like I'm using now. So this is sort of a dressmaking detail to use the micro cords. Um, and it might be where you live. I think in the South people say poppin', you know, <laughs> they're going to add some poppin' instead of, um, you know, in other parts of the U.S. But that's, that's a great question, you know, I've never been asked that before. So if I find out anything different, if, if piping is a, a whole new animal, I will certainly post on our community and, and share that with you. Um, so at the bottom hem, I have the facing on, that's going to be my side hem. Um, I've cut off, allowing about four inches extra, turn that up, and then when I sew, that'll be turned up and it'll make a nice, neat finish on the bottom. And then change to a smaller welt foot. And okay. so, again, mm -hmm. I just found a question that referred back to the flange. Sorry, I okay. missed this before. I wanted to know how big was the finished flange area? On the examples I showed, one of them was three quarters of an inch, and the other one, the, the ruffled pillow with the blue check, that was about an inch and a half. It was a little bit bigger, more dramatic. But you can make it any size you want. Okay, so I've so I'm sewing this on the leading edge, and note on the back here how much closer I'm getting. So I made the welt cord with one size foot. I sewed it on with one size foot. Now this is the last trip of sewing. I'm using that smaller foot so it snugs up close to the welt cord, and then trim away your seam allowances to a quarter inch. Press it so that your seam allowance is to one side, which is going to be towards me on the work table, towards the side hem. And this is the chance to look at the well cord if you needed to get closer or if you got too close. Um, go ahead and adjust that. And then fold over the side hem and press. And you can continue sewing um, just like you normally would. Um, there's the side hem. Lay that out on your work table add your lining and inner lining. Um, I'm hand sewing the side hems, but you could blind hem them or use um, adhesives if you do that in your workroom. So once you get the, the welt cord in, the rest of the process is exactly the same. I do wait to get the length until after the cording is sewn in in case there is any take up. So don't cut your finished length until you get all the welt cord sewn in. Are there any questions? No. And let's see. There we are. Let's go to my last slide. I think I have a, for some reason, there it goes. OK. Um, if you want to get in touch with me after um, the presentation today, um, my email is susan at homedeckgal.com. Very simple. And of course, you can reach me through the community as well. So I'm going to um, switch back to so you can see me smiling at you. And we'll let Kim, I'm still here, <laughs> and let Kim uh, share. Um, and I'm going to pull up the questions, Kim, so that okay. I can see. see All right. It's very second. interesting. This is the first time I've done the, the questions. Um, very good. Let me know when you can see the screen. I can see it. It's very good. Okay. All right. So we're doing double weld cord at my end here. So I cut for double weld cord. I, again, use everything on the bias, um, as Susan had mentioned earlier. And I cut my strips two inches wide. Um, I typically use the 5 30 seconds cord. They do make a double weld cord where the two cording pieces are actually hitched together. I really don't care for that because it's harder to maneuver when you're trying to use. So in this example, I'm going to be using two just regular strips of the cotton flex cord. And you'll see here I've got the double weld foot for my walking machine, which is really helpful when you're trying to do two, you know, do the double weld with the two cords. If you use a single weld foot, it ends up squishing one side of your cording. Sometimes you can fluff it back and other times you can't. Um, on a walking foot, you don't have a skinny foot like you do on the other machines. So you really do need your, you know, your cording feet. 
So what I've done is I've got my bias strip and I'm bringing my first cord into it, folding it over the same way you would typically do if you were doing a single weld. But I've got this excess here where I will then bring the second cord in. Kim, we're not seeing your slides. Okay, let me see. It took me a minute to catch on. <laughs> You're talking. <laughs> All right, can you see it now? If no. I'm in small format like you are? How come it's not doing it? There you go. Oh, it's there. Yeah. It's there. Okay. Yes. So you might have to do the same as I did and not put it in full screen. I don't know why. I think so, yeah. So which slide are you seeing? Are you seeing the one where it says cut fabric two inches? Yes. Okay. So I'll reiterate that again since you didn't see it the first time. Okay. Um, so here's your, your double cording foot with the two cutouts. You can see that it's got the two grooves for the weld cord to go through. And this is a walking foot machine. So here you can see I've got the first row of my cording nested inside of my weld strip or my fabric strip and bring it over the same way as you would do if you were doing a single cord. But then in the bottom picture you'll see I'm taking that second piece of cording and sitting it on top of that. So you can see here's the edge of the, the fabric underneath it. And then what you're going to do is fold it back over the top. So now they're both inside the fabric and I know it's really hard to show on a photograph but I spread it open just so you could kind of get an idea and then you start sewing down them so you are going to see stitches I've used contrast fabric here so that you can see the stitches and with welt cord you know you got to try to match your threads because you do see the stitching unfortunately so here you'll see I'm sewing down again in this area is that first row of cording that we put in the second row of cording on top and then bringing this fabric around and over and then sew down just like you would regular only you've got the double cording foot. Any questions yet Susan? Yes Kim, um, what is flex cord and where do you get it? Okay, flex cord is a cotton cord, and I will have a slide at the end that talks about that a little bit. Um, and that I get from Albany Foam and Supply. It's a very soft, flexible cording. And um, you can purchase double welt cord that's already stitched together. Do you ever use that? I have used it in the past. I find it's harder to hang on to and manipulate the fabric. I end up, because you can't fold that first layer of fabric underneath the second row of cording when they're attached. And a lot of times when you're trying to sew it, the seam allowance will squeak out. So I prefer not to use it. Okay, that's it for now. Okay. So here you can see we've sewn down and you can see where I've folded this back so you can see where it's stitching. And then when you're all done, at the bottom corner here, I used again the contrast thread so you could see it. And there is excess fabric that I didn't show in this picture hanging under there. And then I just trim that excess fabric off. Um, the methods that I've used to attach this to my furniture pieces are um, staples, which staples, depending on your fabric you're using, will show. I mean, if you've got a fabric that it, the staple makes a high contrast, if you use like a pure white, um, your staples would show. When you do staple in, though, the fabric, um, the cording tends to like curl towards each other, so you can take your fingers and pinch them together to hide those staples pretty well. But again, the color of the fabric is really going to dictate whether they're going to show or not. Um, it's one of those things when the light hits it, you'd see a shine in some cases. Um, I do, my favorite method is the hot glue method, but when you do use hot glue, you have to really be careful. You need to get enough of a strip of hot glue, but not too much. Um, when I'm attaching it with hot glue, I always have my regulator handy so that if the glue peeks out, if I take my regulator and run it along the edge and quickly tuck the glue into behind the cording, I'm usually good. Um, if you get a glob of glue, your reaction is to immediately try to take it off. Don't. Just leave it there. Let it sit. When it dries, you can very easily pull it off at that point. But once you squish it into the fabric, you then end up with this shiny spot. And if you start picking at it, you'll see that you'll get like little white chunks of glue forming. And that's almost impossible to pick off. Any more questions before I move on to the next one? 
Um, yes. Um, can you make double welt cord without a double welt foot? And do you, can you make it on a regular industrial or regular sewing machine instead of a walking foot? You know, I always do mine on the walking foot. Um, the problem with trying to make it without the double welt cord is getting your sewing in between the two rows of cording. And as far as I know, there isn't a sewing machine foot narrow enough to get into that space. I don't think your skinny foot would work. Um, certainly something I'll have to try now that you've mentioned that, but my, my instinct would be it's probably not going to be the best results if it's not made with a double welting foot. And I can answer to the, I don't have a walking foot, so uh, you can make it on a regular sewing machine, but you do need that double welt foot. Uh, so you can make get it a lot easier. Foot for that mm -hmm. machine. Okay. Yes, absolutely. And then, um, do you have trouble with the fabric staying tight on one side being bigger than the other? Not using this method. If when I've used in the past using the cording that is a double cording, I do have that problem. But using this method, you've really got control hanging onto that fabric and you can get it nice and snug. Is there a weight of fabric that is, is not suitable for a double welt? A real heavy upholstery fabric is much more difficult to work with doing a double welt just because you've got the excess bulk of the fabric. And in that one area, you're sewing through, let's see, one, two, three layers of fabric. So when you get that extra thick, thick, like a chenille or something, it would be difficult to do it that way. Okay, that's, that's it on the questions right now. Okay. And I've also got on here that you can use fabric or trim glue to glue down your welt. When you do that, what I do is just anchor it with pins every like three, two to three inches as I go along and just leave them in there until it's really dry and then pull your pins back out. So then I decided to play around and make a double welt with two colors of fabric. So what I've got up in the top left here is I've got my two strips of fabric. Um, I sew them together just like you'd sew any two pieces of fabric together. And then in the middle picture, I showed where the seam is. And I'm going to go back to the sewing machine at this point and tuck it the same way that I did, you know, doing it as if it was one color. So you've got your first row of cording snugged under the first color. And then you've got it under there again. And you've got the second row of cording that you lay on top. And then you would just bring that pink fabric over the top of it and sew the two pieces together. So here's what it would look like before you take it to the machine. You can see where that seam is. So then when I took it to the machine, I just sewed right down that ditch. So here you can see all the rolls of fabric. You can see how this one, now see in this picture it's a little bit clearer to see than in the red fabric. You can see how tucking that cording under there is actually pulling those fabrics and keeps them really snug together. So that's really the key in keeping those two welt cords really nicely taut. You do end up, and I don't know, no matter what I've done, I've always ended up when you sew, one cording looks a hair smaller than the other when you finish with your welt cord. So here you can see again more of how I'm holding it to get it in there. And you bring it to the machine and sew right down the same way you did with the first example we used. And here on the right you'll see the finished. So I kept that stitch line right in the seam where those two fabrics were sewn together to begin with. And here's the different kinds of welt cords. We've got the fiber flex, which is a firmer paper-like welt cord. It's the one here on the far left. And it actually has like a netting around it. And you can kind of see the fray of the netting. But you see how solid that is. It's, it's a paper, so it's really tight together. So your cotton flex, which is washable, which I use in slip covers or pillows or cushions that clients will be dry cleaning or laundering. That's your cotton fibers. Again, it has a netting around it, but you can see on the end how it fluffs out. It's a much softer cording than the, the fiber flex. Then you've got the foam flex, which is like a plasticky, foamy type material, and that's used in outdoor cushions. Um, that's really great with anything that's going to have any moisture to it because the shape of this cord is not going to change and you're not going to get the mold that you would get if you had you know, some of the others outdoors. And then the mop cord here on the far right, which I ordered one day to try it and I will never use it again. <laughs> it's just one of those things that 
it's so, you know, it wants to fray so much that you cannot keep it in where you need it to to be when you're stitching very easily. It just kind of moves all over the place. So any questions? Because that's about it for me. Yes, we do have some questions. Um, are you sewing on the front of the cording? So the top of the face of the cord or the top is facing up as you're sewing? It's back here, yes. Okay. So you'll see here I'm stitching on the top. I find that if you can stitch on the top, it just makes it nestle in a little bit better so that when you are applying this, if you're using staples, you've got a nice little indent between the two layers. If you sew on the bottom, your top ends up being a little flatter. And I have a question about where did you purchase the double welt cord for the walking foot machine? And um, Donna, I'm not sure if you're asking cord or the foot. Um, uh, so maybe Kim, you can say both. <laughs> where did you get the cord and where did you get the foot? <laughs> okay, uh, double welt cord. If you wanted the two cords that were that were hooked together, you should be able to get through any upholstery supplier. Albany Foam is who I use, and they do carry them. Um, the actual cording foot for my machine, I get my machines from Sloan Machinery. Um, they're out here in New Hampshire, and he has every foot imaginable, and if he doesn't, he'll get it for you. Um, and also I have a question if a stitch in the ditch foot would work for making double welt. Um, I do have a stitch in the ditch foot. I'm going to give it a try. I don't know, Kim, maybe you've used that. I mean, I have a, a stitch in the ditch foot, and because I was thinking that when I was answering the previous question. My guess is that it would flatten your cording out and whether or not you'd be able to fluff it back up or not, I'm not sure. And do you have a video on how to make double welt? Not yet. Ah! <laughs> I know what you're going to have to be doing now. <laughs> and another question, can you make triple welt or quadruple welt cord? And what would you use it for? I have been trying to play around because I, years and years ago I did see a demo of that and I cannot for the life of me remember how they did it, but I, I'm still playing, so when I come up with it we'll put something out on YouTube um, okay. for you to see, but I would think it would be pretty if you attached it down the center of a pillow or something. I know years ago I did it on um, Lambricans. Um, one of my designers liked to have like a, a contrast cord in the center of two other cords, but I just made them individually and glued them on top of each other. Yeah. So um, I don't know how that would work on upholstery. Go ahead and um, put your smiling face back up. Okay. And I have one more slide. Um, I realized that when my slides were not advancing, one of my slides didn't show. So I'm going to bring that back up um, just to show that. So am I back? You're back. Okay. So now I'm going to go away. And. Um, because I had a lot of questions, and I was like, I know I had that in my slides, so somehow this didn't end up in the presentation. Um, it, it was I was having trouble advancing the slides, and it skipped over this one. Um, for the drapery workroom, these are the general welt cords. Soft welt cord is cotton or polyester, and that's used for pillows, cushions, and window treatments. The sizes range from 3 32nd to 2 inches in diameter. Never use the two-inch diameter for anything. <laughs> I'm sorry, I still have a roll of it from 1989. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> um, and then there's so there's soft or there's firm. Then there's firm welt cord, which is cellulose or polypropylene for outdoor use. So if you're making outdoor pillows or cushions, you can also use polyester soft welt cord for outdoor use. And the sizes range from 4 32nd to 1 inch diameter. And I have a range there because some vendors sell select sizes, some vendors sell all sizes. So um, we really do just get comfortable with what we're used to. So um, if you have a size that you love and you use all the time, just stick with that. And for micro welt, um, or also called cable cord, for soft, you can get cotton or cotton poly blend. It can be a twine or a braid. Firm, you'll use shade cord, the 1.4 millimeter, or even larger, like um, cord that you would use for um, traverse rods. And for a weighted cord, you'd use sausage bead weight. For a couple tips here to end up the presentation, remember that thicker fabrics make thicker cord, so you'll use a smaller diameter cord if needed. Um, mount spools of cord horizontally on the floor, wall, or ceiling stands so that the spool is horizontal and the cord can roll off without twisting. 
and unroll and cover your cord all at the same time as needed. Do not roll off the cord and cut it in advance. It will relax and some cords um, herniate and it's better if they stay taut on the spool as they were spun onto the spool and, and not pulled all off and let to relax and kink up. Um, there's a, certainly a wide variety of quality in welt cords, um, so find a supplier that um, you're happy with and hopefully they won't change their suppliers <laughs> give you a big surprise. <laughs> well, a lot of times if you ask them to send you samples of what they do have available, they'll send you the different items. Yes, most vendors do and I think that's uh, that's so great. Um, so we have um, looking at some of the comments here um, and there's a great, I'd love to carry the conversation uh, over to um, the community so that everybody can see each other's questions because a lot of people are sharing tips that um, I think I'd like to share um, with everyone and um, I do have a question Kim we can discuss about making cushions which is better a soft cording like I'm showing or the cotton flex cording and I'd like to have some of the cotton flex to compare between maybe at the retreat we'll bring all of our welt cords and we can go. compare them <laughs> side by side I typically use the um, the fiber one for cushions that are related to upholstery and in my sip, uh, slip covers I'll use the cotton. So I do use them. They flex fine around the corners. Um, sometimes if you, I find that especially like if you want a sharp corner on a cushion and you pinch them when you get it sewn into the cushion it helps keep that fabric doing what you want it to do. So I do like the, the fiber flex. That's a I, great like it. I like a five or a six thirty seconds. I happen to like a bigger well cord. Okay, good, good. Oh, and um, just uh, to show you the difference, this is <laughs> <laughs> this is the crafting glove where it has all of the fingers. This is the um, sew grip glove, and these three fingers have rubber on them, so they're really good at picking up things and uh, pulling things. So those are my that's my fashion statement for today. <laughs> Start the 80s music. You need a red one and a blue one. To match your colors. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, let's see if we have anything else. Um, I think we've blown an hour. This has been a lot of fun. And it is being recorded. So all of our, our flubs and uh, trouble getting the slides to load um, are on the recording. But I think it's still a successful presentation. I hope that you got a lot of information out of this. Please uh, get in touch with Kim. Um, Kimberly with a L-E-Y at kimsupholstery.com and Susan at homedeckgal.com or through the community or through Facebook uh, or through <laughs> LinkedIn or Twitter. <laughs> and if you think of any questions later just post them on the group or send them to us in emails privately and we'll be more than happy to answer. Yeah, and you can watch this presentation again. We'll have the, um, the video right on the community page, and I hope you will um, reference it if you need more information. So thank you so much, and thank you, Kim. It's been great hanging out today. Thanks, Susan. It's fun. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Bye. <laughs>